Hi guys, my name is Jonathan Norris and I'm the lead SNC coach at Derbyshire County Cricket Club. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about um, the things that I do in my job uh, and how I got here. So what does a strength and conditioning coach actually do? So for me it comes into three areas. We have to plan what the athletes need to do and that's based on what they're doing in their sport um, and what their current level is. We then have to go and actually deliver the training program to try and help the athlete improve and that can be a range of different things which I'll show you and then we have to be able to review the progress to make sure that the things that we're putting in place are actually helping the athlete to improve in their sport uh, and get better over time. Cricket is made up of a bunch of different activities so we have bowling which you can see in this video now where the players have to deliver the ball down to a batsman. They have to run between the wickets, run in the outfield, and then we have to be able to bat. And we've got a couple of examples of what that looks like. In, from a physical point of view, we've got to be able to run fast, jump a long way, jump high, um, have good lower body power, be strong and robust so that we can withstand um, the workload from the games. Uh, and hopefully help us to get um, more powerful and be able to run quicker. And it end up with a few areas that you can see uh, written up here. And it, these are the things that, as a strength and conditioning coach, I'm trying to quantify. So once we've gone about looking at the sport and working out where the individual actually is in terms of their own physical performance, we can put a, a training program in place to uh, work on any weaknesses and also to develop their strengths. In terms of what that then will look like, I'm going to show you a few more videos of some of the stuff that we actually do with the players to try and improve their performance. So we'll start with an example of this upper body power for our bowlers, trying to get them able to bowl faster in a game. We have some low body power exercises, jumping um, unweighted and weighted to try and improve how fast they run, how high they can jump. We look at muscle capacity, which is the amount of work a muscle can withstand. And we try and um, make sure that we're addressing all areas of the body. So we've got some trunk exercises, lower body exercises, upper body exercises, all to make sure that uh, every part of the athlete is as strong as possible so that they can perform the skills that they need to do in the game and also be resilient so that they don't get injured and they're able to play and train as much as possible all throughout the year. One of the exercises that we use that you can try at home is this single leg jump. Place a mark on the ground from where you're going to jump from and Starting on your left leg first, jump as far as you can. Make a little mark where you land and then repeat this with your right leg. Then you can compare the distance between left and right legs and see if one leg is stronger than the other. We use that information then to inform our training plans and help the athletes try and get a more balanced Once profile. Once we've delivered the programme, we want to check to make sure that the athletes actually made the progress that we want them to. So we'll repeat some of the testing that we did, um, whether that be sprint testing, jump testing or strength testing, um, to make sure that the training programme we put in place actually helped them to get better. So we end up having this cycle where we have put a plan in place, we have delivered it, we then go and review it, and then ultimately we have to come right back to the start, create a new plan and go through the process all over again. Now what I want to do is just explain a little bit about my background and how I got interested in strength and conditioning. So I've done a sport and exercise science degree um, at undergrad, which was at Loughborough University. And on that program, um, I learned a lot about how the human body works, um, how the body moves and things around the training process, which helped me now um, in my job as, a, as an S&C coach. Um, after I was at Loughborough, I then decided to continue studying and I went um, to the University of Chester where I um, completed a PhD and that was looking at how um, rugby league players can train and recover uh, better around um, practices and matches. 
In order to become a strength and conditioning coach, it's really important to get experience uh, working with people and, and helping them um, to improve in whatever manner that might be. So to, to get better at coaching. Now, coaching can be um, sport coaching, it can be um, strength and conditioning coaching, but it's also essentially teaching. So any kind of experience where um, you are helping somebody to get better at an activity or a skill um, is really good um, background in order to go on and become a strength and conditioning coach later on. I got really into strength and conditioning because I particularly like helping people to um, improve in their activities. Um, and so I went and got experience working with um, young cricketers, um, some footballers, um, and then through my PhD with rugby league players uh, and, and also Paralympic wheelchair racers. And all of those um, experiences have helped me to become better at communicating with other people and helping them to understand what it is that they need to do in order to become better at their sport. In terms of subjects um, at school that I think are important, PE is probably the, the most relevant um, and that's because you have to have a, a real good interest in physical activity um, and sport potentially and training in order to want to become a strength and conditioning coach um, further, further on in your life. The other subjects that I think are really important are maths and sciences. Um, there's a lot of quite complicated um, technical information that strength and conditioning coaches need to learn in order to help athletes become as good as they can be. And having a really good background in some of these um, technical subjects can be really useful in order to put really effective training programs in place and help athletes become um, as good as they can possibly be. Thanks for watching my talk today. Um, go back in this video and have a look at that single leg jump that I was talking about. Have a go at that at home and record some of your results in the comments below this video.